Hey guys, I'm Mike Hume. I'm uh, filling in for Nick on our site visit this week. Today we're in Charlestown where we're starting to build a small addition on the back side of a house. So believe it or not, we actually found some room in Charlestown to build, but as you can see, we're inside a, uh, it's a 28 inch wide alleyway and that leads out to what used to be a small back deck. And we've since taken that deck off. One of the probably only decks still left in Charlestown pulled that off. We had to hand excavate the for our foundation or footing, we've got down to the bottom of the hole right now. It's gonna be roughly a 10 by 10 addition. It's like nine foot six, and then we're just returning back into the house. And then we're gonna actually open up this whole back corner. We're gonna be inserting, uh, I believe it's a double 16 inch LVL that spans the whole width of the house. And then we're gonna to have to put in another LVL hung off that 16 inch LVL that goes out to this back corner. And this whole inside corner will now be opened up and we're gonna tie it in and build a new kitchen a big walk-in pantry, and then there'll be a built-in dining area. The kitchen addition is single story, but then up above that, once we have this built, because our access is so limited, we're gonna have to set a staging tower on top of that roof to gain access all the way up to the third floor, where we're gonna put a dormer on the backside. That'll be a fun one. That's gonna be really fun. Yeah, we spent a little bit of time before the foundation guys showed up and the goal is to stay in line with this existing house. We're going to carry out to the corner of our addition. We want to make sure that we stay in plain. And then we're pulling square off of that to tie into the existing kitchen that's over there now, that old structure. And you can see we got the lines painted out of where like the foundation walls are going to go. The guys are here. They're going to start forming up for the footings to so get the rebar in the bottom of it and get inspected and hopefully place it today. Thankful that we have very friendly neighbors too because now this gives us access up the opposite side of the house. And we have this small little, I don't know, call it courtyard, I guess, right? And now we're at the end of a dead end street where we have parking permits all lined up so we can nose a concrete truck down to the end of here with a pump. And we'll pump it through those two gates into our backyard and fill up the footing. So we're here at our project in Southie. We're checking in. They're almost wrapped up with plaster. Should be done within the next couple of days. Going up this stairwell, we decided to do a true two coat plaster job. And you can see it has certainly paid off. Perfectly flat. It's crazy. So we spent the extra time because we have the skylight up above. And if you look back, the light will be shining down. If we had any waviness in this wall after it got painted, you'd see like a, a small ripple or you get shadowing on the wall. So we wanted to avoid that. And then the reveal from the wall to the start of the skylight is that same measurement all the way across. And then the same thing coming back to here and make sure everything's nice and straight. It allows it for a nice frameless look. And then we obviously plastered all the way up to the glass as well. So no trim, nice and clean. The access panel that's going to be up in the top of the stairway, but um, we've been using these plastered in access panels and right now we have the outside bead set that's screwed up there. And then the whole center of this gets plastered in so then you just have a small like 16th reveal all the way around the outside. It allows that the access panel has to be there to, so we can access our mechanicals, but it uh, allows it to disappear in the ceiling so it doesn't draw a ton of attention to it. Of course, whenever we film site visit, it is gloomy, raining, and actually today, what is it? It's April 16th, and it's actually snowing. This one's all wrapped up as well. Nice, clean, made sure all the corners are square, plastered right up to the skylight itself. When you look up at it, it looks like a sheet of glass hanging out up there on the roof. It's like anywhere I go, I'm putting the level on just to check and see. It's like, boom, around the corner. So we can go anywhere, anywhere. I was checking all the walls. That's nuts. This transition, inch and a quarter up from the sill. So when we insert, it's gonna be a piece of 3CM stone that gets slid in here for our window sill. Now this is set at inch and a quarter, so it'll plane out and then this line runs continuous across the room. There won't be any jogs up and down. It'll be all at the same height. And we did the same thing over on the other window as well. Make sure it's Everything looks intentional and well thought out. Final patches on some of the plaster that are going through, fine sanding. They're actually sanding with 400 grit right now and filling with a little bit of joint compound, using a light, checking the walls, make sure everything's perfectly smooth. 
So once the plasters are wrapped up in here, we're gonna start prepping our shower stall. We'll waterproof this using the Schluter system. Uh, there's gonna be a glass door with a transom up above because it's a steam shower. And then we're gonna have a, a piece of glass on this side that actually gets notched around our bench. We're gonna use the tiled in glass track like we do on most of our jobs. And it's gonna be a nice clean, you know, floating piece of glass detail. It'll look really good when it's done. We're over in Cambridge, and, uh, Project 170. So they just wrapped up installing the blue board, uh, I believe it was yesterday. And so now the plasters will be here at the beginning of the week and they'll start setting all the corner bead and getting ready to start slinging some plaster on these massive walls. Well, they, they vary. They start down here, like, you know, somewhere around 16 feet and then taper up to just over 18 feet over by the bedroom loft. It's going to be fun watching them trying to get that all. What do you got for lunch? That's some leftover Thai food, man. Nice. Whoa. Is it lunchtime already? Jeez, um, it's getting there. Yeah, so you can see we finished framing down here. We had to frame around the HVAC equipment. There's a big plenum. Framed around everything, got everything supported. And you can see it's tight, but we've got everything to fit. We're using a Bauco access panel um, that you can push up on and then it flips down and you pull it right out of the way so the um, our trade contractors can get in here and service the equipment when they need to. In the center of that, there's also a return duct, and that's going to be our return for underneath in this den area. Right now, we got some quiet rock up temporarily, but this is actually going to come out. So we'll have one layer of, uh, it'll be quarter inch thick, mass loaded vinyl, taped up all the seams, and then we'll have this layer of 5 A's quiet rock. So that will give us just enough room we'll be able to recess the mount for the TV just to kind of help with the projection of the TV out into this space. Crazy detail. I did not fully understand this detail until these renderings were done. We have a mirror that matches the same height as the windows on the two party walls. So there's one over the stairway and then there's going to be one over here next to the TV. So when you walk in this space, it's going to make it feel a lot larger and like there's another window in here. Looking at the plans, it's hard to understand that. And then once you see this rendering, it's like, man, that's cool. What does Nick refer to the millwork team as? Millwork team? Shop team? Guys? Shop guys. Shop guys. Right, so James is here this week. He installed the uh, combo core carcasses for these built-in bookshelves. And so what we're doing is we're using blue board out on the face. We have a pick-on reglet that we have bonded to the combo core. It's they're also screwed and bonded. So you can plaster right over, we'll have a nice clean edge and it's gonna make a seamless transition to the combo core. But this combo core allows us to screw cleats on and then slip our shelves in. So we got these two and a quarter inch floating shelves and you can see this is actually, it's a rendering of the smaller one behind us, but this larger bookcase is gonna look the same. And so you have these floating shelves in between and there'll be virtually no transition between this plaster to combo core. It'd be able to paint it up all the same way and look, it's gonna look great. We've been trying to do this detail. We've tried it a couple of times and being able to make this transition from blue board on the ceiling to like a nice combo core for a cabinetry allows us again, you know, it gives us solid blocking to screw what we need to right into that. I don't know, what do we got? We got it in the kitchen? We got anything in the kitchen? Yeah, so in last week's episode of Revealed, Ken was actually showing you the cabinets that go over on this left-hand side here. So sunk in underneath the office loft, we're going to start, we're going to have a large pantry cabinet, then we're going to have an integrated fridge, and then we're going to go into, there'll be a countertop here with a cooktop, and this was that, we got this like block of cabinets that are made out of the, the same laminate that they're doing our countertops with. Ken had that in his Revealed episode. Pretty cool detail, tile backsplash. And then we wrap over and we have this massive run of cabinets. It comes all the way from this corner, over 20 feet, all the way to the backside. And so there's a long run in here with our sink built into it. And there's this really neat, um, small, like floating ledge that's here that's made out of stainless steel. Uh, gonna have a light track underneath that. It runs all the way across. And you can see we've actually left out some of the isolation clips and hat track to create some extra depth in this cabinet here. That's gonna, we're gonna sneak a freezer into this. And in order to, you know, we're, our restrictions are, we, we got a pocket door for our bathroom back behind us and 
So we can't go beyond that and the fridge needed just a couple extra inches of space so we decided we'd leave off the hat track, we'd turn it back and we're going to do very similar detail to what we're doing over with the TV with some mass loaded vinyl and then quiet rock behind that. Actually, I think these guys got them in, right? There we go. We set the pocket doors in the track and we set all the operation before we plastered anything. Be It'll give us the opportunity to make some small adjustments if we need to make sure everything's operating smoothly. It's a lot easier to do it now than after the walls are completely covered. I wish there was light in here. We could talk about... So you can see that we have... Um, we're hoping to squeak a three gang in here, but it's actually obviously not going to fit. So we have the lighting for our bathroom and then we have a recessed light that goes on the back side of the shower. And we're hoping to squeak in um, a boost for our ERV. That's going to act as our bathroom fan and obviously we don't have room. So now what we're working on is pulling that out and running the boost for the ERV and wiring that into a motion sensor. So we're, a couple ideas. One was like a small you know, sensor up in the corner of the room, very similar, like a security one. So it's monitoring the whole room, any sort of motion. It'll ramp up the ERV and then we can tie that into a timer. And so once that senses there's no more motion here. It would have, you know, a 30 to 40 minute delay and then slowly ramp down. So that's like option one. I don't love that because it's going to be a big sensor up in the middle. So what we're working on is having like a smaller, um, like beam style sensor tucked into one of these corners where you almost wouldn't even see it. And as you walk through the doorway, you would break that beam and then that would trigger the ERV to boost. So a few, few things we still have to figure out on that, but hopefully we can make it all work. And so you don't see a, big motion sensor tucked in the corner of the room or we we're trying to also avoid you know stacking switches over each other or moving this to somewhere that you know really doesn't make sense i guess we'll go upstairs so as you enter the sitting room we got this large built-in that goes you know the majority of the length of this wall um, there's a panel detail here that lines up with the soffit that we framed for the mechanicals and it's actually stacked over the built-in in the entryway uh, a sconce in the middle of it and then over here in this taller section there's you know, full height cabinetry for the clothes storage. This is the the taboo veneer, that gray veneer that you saw Ken working on. I believe it was probably a couple weeks ago now and, and revealed. Framing and we're doing plaster returns to those windows. We're going to tuck automated shades up in the corner. The blue wires that are actually hanging out of the corner right now are for automated shades. And that will give him the opportunity to operate the shades without, you know, just by a remote. Cool detail is connecting the sitting room with the bedroom as we have these interior windows and it helps the client just wants to be able to, you know, have a lot of natural light in the space. So it's a cool way. It's going to create a, a really nice detail. So we got a couple of them in here. You got the one looking back in the sitting room. And then we also have this one looking into the bathroom to capture light from the skylight. And then there's also another one, you'll see it as you go back down the stairs that was framed out. So the skylight, will, the light from the skylight will actually fall through that other interior window down in lighting up the courtyard down below. Sliders in, tested all the hardware, make sure everything's working properly before we close these walls up and it's more difficult to go back and fix things. We have the clipboard set up all around the job site. And here's the one for our master bath and it has, so anybody that walks in here, they're going to know what the vanity looks like, how it was built. And then any additional information that we could pass along to other people so they understand. One of them is we're going to be adding um, a skylight motor. So Brian has printed out all the specs on that skylight motor. Just so everybody, if you have any questions on anything that's going on in this room, you can go through, flip through check out the specs so you understand. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you subscribe and Nick will be back next week so you won't have to deal with me anymore. <laughs> I'm sure you'll make me do it a few other times, but we'll have some fun. Give a shit, okay? I'm a big fan of giving a shit. High energy, I want everybody to be excited. Some countertop space. Get that on your bloopers, Doug. So I did, nope, already f***ed up. Might as well just start over. <laughs> it's up there. It's roof man I don't know what I'm saying I don't know why I'm carrying the level but <laughs> and we're in our I guess I see why uh, Ken has all the blooper reels now huh <laughs>